So when I was a child, um, I was very shy. I didn't speak. They were very concerned about me. And I had mm. two older sisters and an older brother. And um, I would always sneak in their room and I would look at their, their magical albums, you know, and I would see these people. And so I was always fascinated with, with that whole, the, the magic of rock and roll. And it did have power. It had power because I, I took up a, the musical instrument because I could speak through that in grade school. And then in sixth grade, I took up the electric guitar. And I was, like I said, I was very antisocial, very quiet, shy person. But that mm -hmm. electric guitar was magic. It like mm -hmm. it instantly gave me popularity at school. It w it was okay. like this magic sword that I. And at the same time, I was always obsessed with my older sisters and the concerts and the shirts that they wore and the albums that they would bring home and the music that would come from their bedrooms. Um, so as I became a teenager, I really got deep into the whole rock and roll culture, and mm -hmm. Aleister Crowley's house that Jimmy Page bought you know, and all the, the spooky occult symbols and all the albums and all that stuff. That was kind of my childhood. Mm -hmm. But I also recognized that um, there was a level of silliness to the whole thing, but there was also a level, -ness, uh, a, a level of, of realness where these rock stars, they, they did have magic. You know, um, they were treated like kings. Mm -hmm. You know, they got off buses and airplanes and people would scream and, fall on the ground and they'd put on these concerts where a hundred thousand people would show up and they would buy their stuff and wear their stuff. So I, I thought well, there's gotta be some type of spooky magic, except, you know, spookiness from a distance taking place. Mm -hmm. And, um, as I embraced the guitar and, and got into bands myself, I experienced a lot of that magic. And when I left it all, because after college, I, I got rid of all my instruments and I just completely rejected that whole lifestyle and that whole scene. Um, I really got off track and um, the serendipity that always took place in my life was gone. It just kind of vanished. And um, again, spooky things from a distance. When I was 30 years old, I had this vision I talk about a lot where I didn't own a guitar wasn't really into the rock and roll culture. I had short hair. I was working for a police department and I was taking a shower and I got this vision where I saw myself building guitars and building guitars for my heroes, like, like Jimmy Page. And it was the, it was ridiculous, but I was shaking. I had goosebumps all over myself. And I, I told my wife, this, I want to start building guitars, you know, 30 years old, never cut a piece of wood, run down to Home Depot, mm -hmm. buy a $99 bandsaw. And I, I go into the lumber section. I'm like, well, that, that looks like wood. You know, that looks, <laughs> that looks like this stuff you cut. You know, I'm like, how hard can it be? You just draw a picture of a guitar on a piece of wood and you cut it out. That's the guitar. Um, so for three years, I just kind of experimented in my basement, making mistakes after mistakes, you know, learning, learning. Mm -hmm. And um, weird stuff started happening again. Things started lining up. Serendipity started to take place. The right people started coming to my life. Started feeling good about myself again. I felt like I was on the right path. You know, this, what is this? Is this magic? Mm -hmm. um, so some, some very bizarre things that I don't even talk about um, happened where I felt like, okay, well, I also have, I have some in, internal things going on, but I have some external forces taking place that are definitely guiding me as I've started this new career at age 30. And um, it gave me confidence to where I took a lot of risks and those risks really paid off. And long story short, 20 years later, I'm at the Beverly's, Beverly Hills, um, some hotel in Beverly Hills, walking down the hallway to Jimmy Page's room and I have a guitar for him. And I hung out with Jimmy Page that day and gave him the guitar. Um, so that little vision I had 20 years ago actually came true uh, along with some other things to where it's almost hard to deny that some type of magic took place and mm -hmm. i started to embrace my past my childhood memory started to come up and before i knew it i was building these guitars 
that kind of represented everything in my life that that meant something to me um, that proved to me that it was the right right path you know I was it, it's almost like um, something like the, the things that the, the powerful images that I experienced when I was a child really makes you think about time it's like in free will it's like are those powerful images because we're seeing a glimpse of something that has already been written like like mm -hmm. time is just a bunch of blocks and the future actually exists and there's a little glitch in the system where you mm -hmm. you see an image that's so powerful and you're like why was that so powerful why did mm -hmm. the hair on my back stand up and then 30 years later that image is actually coming to fruition in reality where you're actually experiencing that thing that gave you chills 30 years earlier. Um, mm -hmm. So I don't know. I don't think anybody knows. I don't know any of this crap. Um, but it, it, it's a theme with me and my guitars. Um, so when I build the spooky stuff, I'm, that just feels right. You know, and it, it's just mm -hmm. a reflection of some of the experiences I had when I was a child maybe mm -hmm. i'm trying to just hold on to those those experiences um yeah and reflect them in my art i mean i i it's weird i think other people may be able to can explain all that better than i can because i'm just living it i i don't really think a lot about how to articulate all this stuff so i just mm -hmm. kind of blabble on but i hope i kind of did a good an okay job but that's and then before i knew it you know, I'm being called the dark horse Luther, Luther, and mm -hmm. and all. Uh, and people are like, "Oh, he's so spooky. He bought a church so he can do, you know, whatever he's doing." And I'm just like, "No, I right. just I feel like I'm just a normal guy doing what I feels right." Uh, yeah, but it is kind of weird that I ended up in this church, you know, because I'm I only, that's that's another weird. vision that I. Have. But it is yeah, a vision I also had, you know. All right, tell me about. It. I'm just gonna sit back and have a drink. Well, it, it's just that you know, like I said, when I was a child, I had all these visions of how my life was going to be. But when I became a little older, I thought, oh, that's a silliness, you know, that those mm -hmm. things don't really happen. I need to I mean, get a haircut and get a real job and, and join <laughs> society, you know, <laughs> but, but when I did that, it really felt like I was off track. Um, so when I jumped back into the silliness and back into mm -hmm. my dreams, um, things happened. And yeah. then, um, you know, when I was a kid, I'm going to, be in the music industry and I'm going to have a castle and all, you know, all this stupid stuff that you think when yeah, you're yeah. You know, 13 mm -hmm. years old, and now I'm 60 and I live in a castle and I'm in the music industry. So <laughs> I, don't know. I love it. Thank you for watching and listening. You can find more episodes wherever you listen to your podcasts and a special thanks to those who support us on Patreon. It's your support that enables us to do this work.